hi everybody welcome 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 to today's video if you watched yesterday's video you would have already been expecting today's video i promise you guys a cute little flirty tempo sundress hack here she is in all her glory and as you can tell i used ankara fabric because it's also ankara appreciation week over on instagram ankara appreciation week is hosted by juliet uzo and that lena king over on instagram and today's theme is all about prints so big and bold prints and small but mighty prints i grabbed the opportunity to merge the tempo sundress launch and Ankara Appreciation Week into one. This fabric I've been holding for a little bit. I finally got the opportunity to cut into it. And this is my little hacked temple sundress. So if you wanna find out how I did this hack, stay tuned. <music> Now this hack is really, really simple. And I think a lot of the other ambassadors have already done tie straps as well, which means this is a given for the temple sun dress pattern. You have to try the tie straps. I also added a little ruffle on the hem. Just in case you missed yesterday's video, the temple sun dress pattern by Love Notions launched yesterday. It is meant for woven fabrics. It is your typical sun dress pattern, but you do have sharing in the back, or you can do elastic channels instead if you're not into sharing or if you're scared of sharing there are two lengths there's the knee length and the midi length the midi length has a tear to the bottom yesterday's which was my first make i did the knee length today i actually shortened my skirt to add the ruffle to the bottom i shortened it about six inches and for my orange version i did do the sharing alley back but for this one just because the fabric was so stiff I decided to go the route of the elasticated back panel. Also, I am running low on elastic thread and I can't seem to find any on island. So I went for the elastic this time. Now I absolutely adore the shoulder tie straps and the ruffle. However, I did make one little boo on this dress. And that is because as you know, with Ankara fabric, you're kind of limited with the width. It's usually 44 to 45 inches wide. My fabric was 45 inches wide and I only had three yards as you can see this print is kind of bold and you do have to be a little bit careful with print placements or it could just look out of whack so i nailed the bodice i have this gorgeous large flower on the bodice love the way that looks i also use this exact large flower on the back center panel you can't really see it on the back panel once the elastic pulled it in but then the skirt is where i made a big boo boo and honestly i had no control over it this is the way i had to lay out the skirt for it to fit on the fabric so as you can see these two large flowers are placed so that the bodice large flower is in the center which is fine for the front however i did not think that true for the back i was in a rush i cut out my skirts went merrily along my way and then when i took my photos yesterday i realized i have two big flowers on each butt peg moment of silence for the death of this dress so y'all know hubby likes to name my clothes he has officially named this dress the baboon butt okay needless to say this dress will no longer be a dress this is gonna get chopped and it's going to become a top because i actually have no choice now i cannot unsee the baboon butt it's not going to look as bad on esmeralda because she's so much smaller than the dress but on me when my butt fills this out you cannot unsee that baboon butt effect. As usual, I have the dress pinned all kind of ways to get it to hold up on Esmeralda, but I think you can get the effects of the lovely elasticated back panel and then the baboon butt. Now I am gonna stop rambling and let's get into the nitty gritty of things. I know you guys are anxious to see how exactly I did the hack and I did record everything and especially I saw a lot of questions about doing the elasticated back as opposed to the sharing method so I am going to show you exactly how to create the elastic channels and feed the elastic through as well as all the details of the hack itself let's get into it so here are my back 
and front straps these two are my back these two are my front straps what i did was i used the exact same pattern piece but i cut them on the fold so this is the actual length of the pattern piece and you just cut two this length and those make your two straps but what i did is i cut it on the fold and i cut four because we need two fronts and two backs because they're gonna tie on top of the shoulders and what i'm going to do is when i fold it over to stitch along the long edge i'm also going to stitch along one short edge to finish that edge so when i turn it right side out this edge will already be finished and this edge we can leave like this and it will get enclosed in the facing so then this finished edge will be the edge that will hang from the end of the strap here's what the strap looks like after it is sewn i've sewn along the long edge and along one short edge i am going to go ahead and trim these seam allowances now and then flip this right side out and give it a good press so i have my four straps completed i have my two back straps my two front straps i am going to sit these onto the side now and i am going to get working on my bodice so last time i did sharing this time i want to try the elastic casings so i have my two templates cut this one will be the one on the right side and i hope you can see i have my lines drawn to stitch to create my elastic casings the first thing we need to do however is place these two right sides together and we are going to stitch along the top long edge of the template and that will finish the top edge so i have stitched my panels this is what the inside looks like so you stitch them right sides together and then you flip them wrong sides together now we are going to top stitch the edge as well as all of these lines to make our channels here's a closer look so you can see these lines that i've drawn those are going to create the channels for the elastic okay here's what my back panel looks like now i have all of my lines top stitch i have my half inch elastic already these lines these channels are five eighths of an inch so the half inch will fit perfectly in between i am supposed to cut seven inch pieces and i have six channels so i'm going to go ahead and cut six seven inch lengths of elastic i'm going to use a safety pin and thread them through and we're going to thread them through every other channel until we get to the very last one and then i'll come back and show you guys what that looks like Is my back panel complete it almost just looks like if it was shared to be honest and I think I have to say I prefer the sharing <laughs> the sharing was more enjoyable I did not have fun <laughs> threading through this many elastics but if you are afraid of sharing this option exists I do like how it looks though I love how the you can still kind of see the pattern coming through and this definitely has a lot more tension than the sharing. So if you're worried about the body stretching out, this I would say is the better option. So now I'm going to assemble my back 
and my front as normal this is what my front bodice looks like so i am going to go ahead and get my front straps and there are notches on the bodice for the strap placement Have my two straps pinned right sides together now i'm going to go ahead and attach my front facing this is my front facing you should already have your edges finished and we're just going to attach this right side together onto the bodice encasing the shoulder straps Okay, so I'm all pinned up. I am going to go ahead and stitch this now. This is what my bodice looks like with the top all finished. I have understitched my facing. It's looking really nice and neat and the straps are encased. Now we are going to do the same thing for the back. So here is what the back looks like. This is the center panel and you have your two side panels. So I've gone ahead and pinned that center panel to the side panel right sides together and then the facing is going to go on top like so you're gonna make sure not to catch this underneath except for at the edge so you're gonna do this all in one stitch all the way across and then all the way down that way this is gonna get encased in the facing back bodice is finished you guys this is what it's looking like this one has a little teensy weensy bit of a step up but that is not bothering me in this light that is gonna stay what i really want you to see is the inside look how pretty that is so now i am going to connect my back and my front right sides together at the side seams and what we're going to do is open up the facing so here you can see my facing up here and when we lay the front one right sides together we'll open out the front facing as well and we're gonna do one clean stitch so here is my front so we're gonna line up the facings and then we're gonna stitch all the way down to the hem that is gonna finish the entire inside all at once and i will come back to you guys when i have my skirt ready okay this is what my ruffle piece looks like this is four and a half inches this way and the length honestly this is however long i could have gotten from the scraps i had left so this one i think is about 43 and then my other ruffle i think is about 44 or 45 which is the entire width of the fabric so it probably won't gather as much as i would have liked it to at the hem but this is what i have to work with so i am going to just sew this on like you would sew the midi length tear so if you follow the middle and tear instructions in the pattern i'm going to sew the ruffle the exact same way i am just going to sew them at the side seams together front and back and gather actually it's the exact same way you put the skirt on the bodice and then i am going to just go ahead and do a half inch hem and that is it So that is it for this simple hack 
like I said, it's going to get hacked even further because now it needs to become a top. I cannot wear this out knowing that I have baboon. But apart from that, the dress is really, really cute. I did have a really hard time taking photos because number one, I was kind of out of sunlight. Actually, the dress is unhemmed between me and you. The dress is unhemmed. I still have to hem it and I'm not going to anywhere because it's going to become a top. But I was running out of sunlight and I literally just had to throw this on and dash out the house to get some photos quickly. So between the sunlight and there is just something about this fabric. I don't know the brown in the dress. So it is green. It is a nice lime green. Also a neon green hot pink white and there's a dark brown for some reason the dark brown kept picking up as orange and i could not get this dress to photograph true to color it was an absolute struggle therefore i don't have many photos something was just up with the lighting something was up with the camera something was up with the dress i have no idea but i hope you enjoy my photos anyway if you do test out this hack be sure to tag me on instagram also make sure you post over in the love notions facebook group it's a really really supportive group with tons of inspiration and we are all just one big family there so i highly encourage you to join us i will leave the link down below also the temple sundress is still on release sale until next tuesday so you still have a chance to grab it for five dollars off the regular price as usual i will have my affiliate link down in the description box below if you feel inspired by my make and you want to purchase through my link i will earn a small commission at no extra cost to you if you take anything away from this video i hope it is that you should always buy more than three yards of ankara fabric fabric especially if it has any type of circles in the print just to make sure you don't end up like me that is it for today's video i am out and i will catch you in my next video bye